Thank you, Judy. Um, and thank you to Pastor John for you know, having me here and having this group have me here. Um, Judy did an interesting thing a few weeks back. Um, she, there, was a, there was an article in the, in the Cortland Standard about my initiative into looking into the South Cortland Cemetery. And my interest uh, apparently piqued her interest. And in, while well, I was on one of my two rare trips to church, um, she cornered me at one of the pews and said, um, hey, we would really like you to present at, at one of our Thursday night gatherings. And I'm like, uh, you know, I had little bits and pieces of this presentation in different spots all around my you know, computer and at home, piles, et cetera. And, uh, but she inspired me. She basically said, well, you know, there's nothing like a hard deadline to kind of bring you up to con conclusion. <laughs> and my wife has since emphasized that. And so, I, you know, behind every good uh, procrastinator, there's an even better motivator. <laughs> Um, I'm wondering if we can dim a light or two. I don't know if we have to do all of them. So I'm going to talk about um, the South Portland Cemetery largely. We've got to get this whole distance thing right. Um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the Cortland County Cemeteries, the abandoned ones in particular, in a, in, a, in a broader sense. The first half is essentially kind of a look back to what I've learned thus far. And, um, so it's kind of a look backwards. The other part of the presentation is what I hope will be kind of a look forward. Um, and it's kind of a call to action because I think there's some work to be done as it relates to Cortland's cemeteries, and there are lots of them. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So if you want to go ahead and click that. When I went into work today, I work up in Syracuse. Um, immediately turned on my computer as I do every day, and, and I'm hit with a big, large photograph uh, reminding me, of course, that it's Veterans Day. And of course, that's one day that we look backwards and, and appreciate the folks who have who've given so much for our country. And by the way, we should keep that in mind all the time, all you know, year round. It shouldn't be just one day a year. Um, but I just think that's appropriate that we would talk about looking back at the, the folks who've been buried in their cemeteries around us, because I think we should be paying honor to them. Um, and the folks who came before us and founded this community and, and lived and died here before we had a chance to live and die here. So I just think it's kind of a nice appro appropriate kind of a setting from a chronological standpoint. So I'm going to talk very quickly about the agenda. And by the way, I do tend to ramble. I've got three or four people in the audience. You, you, know, you, you know who you are, who that will they'll kind of move me along if I have to because I can go off on major tangents. I'm going to talk about credit, dis disclaimers and credits bio, why me, and what, why I'm interested in the subject, uh, what I know about the Cortland Cemetery, the South Cortland Cemetery, then we're going to talk about the future plans, and hopefully at the end, if I don't babble too much, we'll have some questions and answers. And last time I did this, it was an hour and a half, folks, so I've got to cram this in. <laughs> um, so disclaimers and credits. First of all, I, I make this very, very clear. I am not a historian, um, and I don't claim to be. I'm just one of these people who gets the bug, and there are lots of people like me out there in the world, and, and then there are, of course, formal people who have the formal training and the, and the resume, so to speak. But I'm not one of those people. I just find it interesting. Um, so I just, I've just got the bug, and I'm rolling with it. Uh, I met a nice lady from Homer the other day, uh, Kathy Beardsley, I think her name is, and she said, oh, I'm just self-appointed, so that's what I'm doing, too. I'm self-appointed. <laughs> um, but historians, just like we do, we get to look back on history and uh, um, we have to rely on the folks who kind of came before us, and we have to give those folks credit. So anybody who travels in local history circles in Cortland is familiar with these kinds of documents. So they're published histories, H.P. Smith's history. Um, I'm not going to list them here because I have to go kind of quickly, but if you get online and if you go to the Cortland Historical Society, you'll see these publications, and they're just wonderful reads, and they're back from the, you know, the 1800s, and they're really kind of schmaltzy in some respects, but they're factual and there's lots of good stuff in there and, and it's very rich resources. So I encourage you to do that, but also I want to make sure I give those folks credit. Local historians past and present, Jeanette Benton, um, who formed the Historical Society and was a big, a, a major leader in the Daughters of the American Revolution. To the living folks, Marianne Kane, Anita Wright, Mindy, who's just taken over as executive director, and another generally self-appointed fellow, uh, Ron Rocco. <laughs> He, he was a Cortland historian for, uh, uh, for a while, and uh, Ron's like me, he goes off and on and on and on and on. Um, local cemetery and history buffs, again, more self-appointed people. Genealogists, these are the coolest people. Um, if, if I do nothing more, I'm going to talk about this in a, uh, another minute here, but if I do, no more, do nothing more with the research I'm doing, then leave some popcorn trails for these folks to follow back to maybe one of the graves at this, web, at, at this, at this site or some of the other cemeteries in Cortland, then I'm going to think of it as a success. So 
genealogists are just, just tremendous. They're, they're, they're putting stuff online. They're, it, this is just amazing. So um, online resources and digitizer. There's a, if you go online, I've been able to do a lot of my research because uh, obviously I work up in Syracuse and I, I rarely get to the histor historical society. Um, so I have to do a lot just sitting in, in my house on the laptop. And a lot of stuff has been digitized and you can go on Google and do all kinds of cool stuff and, and learn a lot. And that's because of folks like these who have taken the time to scan in newspapers and type in manuscripts and all, all those kinds of things that are uh, necessary to you know, putting stuff online. And I even include Google in that, even though some people hate Google, um, and they're breaking all kinds of copyright laws, I think, in doing that. But the bottom line is there's a lot of good stuff online because of Google putting it there. So, and from my vantage point, if I, if I um, contribute anything new to this search, that's just going to be a beautiful thing. And if I do nothing more than uh, you know, basically help document some of the information that's out there and put it in on, online and, and digitize it for future generations, I'm, I'm thinking it's a pretty good success as well. Um, and lastly, I just want to point out there are people in this room who are experts, um, know more than I do, in fact. Um, so if you see errors, uh, you see holes, you see other kinds of things that you can add to, to add to the research I'm doing, uh, opinions, anything, just let me know because this is an ongoing process and I don't, I don't perceive it as being a finished, done deal. So, Can I go back, Lisa? I'm going to go very quickly here. So I'm from Rochester. I have Lisa, my wife. Max and Margaret, um, that's my family. Uh, as Judy mentioned early on, um, I've got, well, I've got an English background, but somehow or another I ended up in the advertising world. So I ended up working as an ad agency copywriter. I owned my own firm for a little while. I taught uh, marketing communications at SU for a little while. Um, marketing government relations manager at Anna and up in Syracuse right now. Um, I've been a writer from a freelance standpoint. I've donated a lot of services and marketing assistance to not-for-profits. And my more recent, my most recent um, board, uh, you know, jumping on a board was the uh, Cortland Rural Cemetery Foundation to try and raise funds for that uh, for that cemetery. Um, generally speaking, I'm just a big fan of old stuff. I was a you know big nerd alert when I was a little kid. I used to work on antiques um, when everybody else was out playing. I would you know, it, it's kind of a crazy thing. My mom and I would just work on antiques and, and refinish them. Um, so I've just been interested in that, and it it, it kind of manifest itself uh, in the houses that we've, we've had the luxury of, of renovating over the last couple of years, one up on Prospect Terrace and one on Church Street. And then over time, and this largely happened up in, up in uh, Rochester, Lisa and I used to go for walks um, in the Mount Hope Cemetery, which is one of the beautiful garden cemeteries that New York State has. And we used to go for walks up there, and I got the bug there a little bit. The thing about this is you get a little bit of time. And then um, I used to commute at one, to one of the ad agencies in, in, in Ithaca, so every day I'm driving by the South Portland Cemetery, and it just kind of catches your eye as you're driving down that, that highway, surrounded by industry, and then there's this little oasis off to the right, and it just kind of draws you in. And there it became a personal project. One day I just kind of pulled up behind and went out with a notebook and a camera and started taking pictures and taking notes, and, and I was thoroughly hooked. And, you know, life goes on like that. Sometimes it takes you down strange paths. So. Are you going to calm down? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and interestingly, I brought Mountain Dew down, with me, which is, which is caffeinated. So, <laughs> so, so, so um, from a personal standpoint, um, and from, and I hope that everybody kind of has this, has this, you know, a motivation within. Um, I've always been intrigued by this quote here: "Most men lead lives of quiet desperation." Most people do not know the other half of it, and uh, basically, and, and they go to the grave with a song still in them. And it's, of course, Henry David Thoreau. My thought on that is, you know, the, the majority of people in the world are not kings and queens and politicians and these big shots. Uh, the majority of the people are, lead quiet little lives, um, but they're full of joy and they're full of jealousy and they're full of ambition and they're full of false hopes and sadness and all these kinds of things. And they're just as important as the people who we read about in the papers every day. Um, and I'm just pretty intrigued by that. And, and when I was an English major, one of the books, um, I'm going to kind of pass this around if I could. Um, when I was an English major, um, the book Spoon River Anthology is just one of those books that also kind of caught my eye. So Spoon River, I'm not sure if folks know about this, but it's a, it's a fictional account of a, of a town in Illinois. And it's basically told um, by the... Uh, by the people who are buried in a graveyard. So they basically come to life in, 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 in narrative, and they tell the story of, between them, 
sometimes it's like stone to stone, the people that are buried there, they'll, they'll have like, they'll still be bickering, one stone next to the <laughs> other stone. Um, and over, over reading the entire anthology, you get a sense of the community. And I just thought this poster is a really, really good capture. This was a theatrical um, version of the, of the, of the, the poetry. But just putting a, a microphone in front of a gravestone is essentially, it just captures in one image what I'm trying to do um, from a global standpoint with, with this cemetery and hopefully the other cemeteries in the community. So if that's the inner motivation for me and hopefully for others, you can go ahead. There's also a lot of external motivation, um, and this gets down into the cemetery itself, and it's, this is replicated all ac across the, the county. Um, basically put, they're under a lot of duress from time, vandalism, all kinds of things that are taking their toll when you put up a, it's basically an outdoor museum, and if you put an outdoor museum up, it's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a lot of damage over time, but, so you have gravity at work, obviously they fall down on their, on their own, people push them over, there's this frost cycle which knocks them over, the ground is always, it's more liquid than we give it credit for being, and of course it's, it's jarring and pulling these stones apart and knocking them over on a regular basis, so there's just gravitational duress that they have to struggle with. Uh, vegetation, you know, it looks, this is a kind of a nice bucolic pastoral kind of photograph, but basically this, this stone is going to be torn asunder eventually, and, and it's going to be lost, and it's a pretty stone. It makes for a good photograph, but it, it, it will eventually tear the stone apart. Vegetation can crawl up the face of it and tear it apart that way. Um, there's, you're going to see a gravestone later on. Uh, uh, the, the, the fellow under it, his name is John Stambro. But, but if you look closely, there's a hole in front of it, and it, it looks like somebody. It looks like he literally just crawled out of it, which would be kind of creepy. But it's a, but it's a woodchuck has has, you know, basically dug dug his way. He's probably got a very nice nest. These gravestones, by the way, they tend to be four or five feet, so you're only seeing a bit of it on top, and they tend to go much deeper. So he's got probably like a nice little condominium underneath there. But he will eventually contribute, I would I would imagine, because it's going to fill with water. Speaking of water. Um, the, a lot of the stones, you can see some marble in there, but, um, and I thank Chris Buck for pointing out, uh, I, I referred to it in the article and on the website originally as, uh, as slate, but it's actually a siltstone or schist. Um, it is a sedimentary rock, and what happens if you imagine a, a, a layer of pancakes and then you turn them sideways, and then you dribble water or syrup on them, eventually they're going to kind of fall apart. So that's basically what happening, what's happening. So you can see, this is one of the prettiest stones in the cemetery. You can see the crack along there. You see it from the top. So that's going to fill with water, and it's going to crack, and it's going to shear off the face of it. And you can see an example of where that's happened right here. And by the way, I imagine we'll probably lose a couple maybe even this, this winter just because of this, because some of these are like right on the cusp of, of happening. You don't even want to touch them. So you don't even want to look at them. <laughs> and of course, I got one more. Sorry. And then you have development. Especially out on the south, or, uh, on the South Cortland Cemetery, you know we've got our WalMarts and we've got our Lowe's and we've got our Finger Lakes Business Park. And while you don't see traffic there, um, there is a lot of traffic running by there. So you've got vibration, you've got dust, you've got all kinds of, uh, you know, you've got acid from the exhaust. Um, all the stuff that traffic does, that's rattling right in front of the cemetery, and obviously it's very, very close. So and it's got to be three, four thousand, five thousand cars a day that go through there. So and it's going to get worse, and it's going to get you know, more dense over time. Thanks. <laughs>